We don't know what muscle knots are. We know they hurt a lot, and we know that if you find and push on them for a while, they tend to feel better. But as to what's causing them, we're not sure. So in today's video, with the help of the cadavers here in the lab, we're going to investigate the mysteries of muscle knots. All I know is that we're both gonna need a massage after this one. Let's do this. First things first, I am sick, and I have been for the past week. And this weekend, I was even lucky enough to lose my voice almost entirely, but it's finally starting to come back. So please don't judge me too harshly if by the end of this video, it sounds far worse than it does right now. But to understand muscle knots best, we first need to have a working definition as to what they even are or what people think of them as. Now, muscle knots are more properly known as a trigger point. And trigger points are most commonly defined, although there are plenty of people who would disagree with this definition, as being a discrete, focal, hyper-irritable spot that's located in a taut band of skeletal muscle. Now, that's a mouthful, but it actually tells you quite a bit about it, right? It's a single spot that if you poke it, it tends to be highly irritable, and there's gonna be muscle tension in the surrounding area. Now, trigger points also tend to come with what are known as preferred pain patterns. Now, you're probably familiar with these. The most probably recognizable one would be from a heart attack. So if you're suffering a heart attack, you may feel pain that goes up into your neck, into your jaw, down your left arm, and occasionally even into the right arm, right? This is a radiating pain that is in a different location than the source of that pain, which in this case would be the heart. Well, trigger points come with their own referring pain patterns, right? You poke them, they tend to radiate pain down specific pathways. So the thing is, that definition is really more of a description than it is anything else. It doesn't tell you what causes them. So the primary issue is a lack of evidence and reproducible diagnostic criteria. It's difficult to do science when most of the evidence is subjective and two expert manual therapists can't even find the same trigger point on the same individual. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means we need to roll up our sleeves and do some good old fashioned science. Skeletal muscles contract when neurons release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. And what will happen is the acetylcholine will bind to the muscle cell, causing sodium ions to flow inside, which creates an action potential. You can think of it as this, a signal literally traveling on the surface of the muscle cell, and that will eventually lead to the release of calcium ions inside of the muscle cell. Now in the presence of calcium, the thick and thin filaments, which are just protein accumulations, will actually bind to one another and then change shape. And when they change shape, we call that a muscle contraction. Now this is wild, I want you to think about this. This is happening hundreds of thousands to millions of times depending on the movement that you're performing. It's, it's so mind boggling. But it's essential to understand this process if we're to really start understanding the mystery of trigger points. Now if you recall, trigger points come with muscle tightness. And researchers have long wondered if there was a hyper secretion of acetylcholine at that neuromuscular junction, if that could create a mini cramp of sorts that would then cause pressure and tension to be placed upon nerve endings that could create painful sensations, what if we called that mini cramp a muscle knot? That would make a lot of sense. It seems pretty intuitive. So what researchers cleverly decided to do was inject Botox into muscle knots. I mean, this is brilliant. So Botox stands for botulinum toxin, and it's a neurotoxin that is produced by the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. Now what it does is it actually prevents acetylcholine from being released at that neuromuscular junction. So when you can't release acetylcholine, you can't create an action potential, you can't get calcium to be released inside of the muscle cell, you've paralyzed the muscle. There's no muscle contraction. Now there are plenty of legitimate medical uses for Botox, but most of you will probably recognize it as a cosmetic application to help limit wrinkles in the face. And it does this by paralyzing the muscles of the face. And when the muscle's paralyzed, it can't put tension on the skin, so the skin becomes relaxed, the muscles relaxed, and you just end up having a youthful looking area. So researchers, when they injected Botox into the muscle knots, well, what they saw was, sure enough, relaxed muscle. I mean, you've paralyzed it. But here's the interesting thing. The pain didn't go away. I mean, you would expect that when you inject a paralyzing agent into a muscle, that the pressure would be taken off the surrounding nociceptors, those pain receiving neurons, except that didn't happen, which is really strange. Because when a massage therapist or anybody works this out, 
right? The pain and the tightness will go away, but here they are paralyzing the actual muscle and the tightness went away, but the pain didn't go away. And that is really, really weird. Now you may be thinking, Justin, that really wasn't a mini cramp, right? A cramp, and we'll actually do a video on cramps specifically in a, in a, in a future date, but a cramp essentially is when you don't have enough energy, biochemical energy to stop a contraction. So if you remember everything I just said, right? The, the calcium causes the proteins to contract. Well, in order to stop that contraction, you actually need something called ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. ATP is the energy that your body uses and, and proteins use in order to conduct their business. Well, in order to produce ATP, at least in sufficient quantities for us as a human being to have normal functioning life, you need oxygen. This is why you breathe. If you didn't have oxygen, you wouldn't be able to produce ATP in a high enough quantity to live, right? To move and do things. So in a cramp, what's happening is you just don't have enough ATP to stop the contraction. Well, many people have thought, well, what if a muscle knot is what we call an energy crisis, right? It's, let's say that you have bad posture. You know, you're sitting, maybe you're driving, you're sitting at your computer doing something along those lines. Well, when you're putting a lot of tension on the muscles in the back here, people have theorized, well, what if that's putting tension on capillaries? And when you put tension on the capillaries, that interferes with the delivery mechanism of oxygen to the muscle cells. And again, if you don't have, a mu if you don't have oxygen, you can't make ATP and you can't stop, uh, stop the contraction. So, and if you can't stop the contraction, what that would do is then it creates more tightness. So then even if you relaxed, the area is still tight. And since it's still tight, that would mean you're still putting pressure on the capillary and you find yourself in this weird, horrible, vicious feedback system where you just can't stop the contraction and you're depriving this area of blood supply and oxygen. I know that was pretty wordy, but that's what many people have theorized is going on, right? We have an energy crisis and this is an actual mini cramp. But here's the weird part. Researchers have discovered if you have a tight muscle, let's say that my anterior anabrachial muscles here are really tight and I poke it, what will happen is they will release that tension and they will not be as, they will not be experienced much pain. Also, when you poke a muscle, the antagonist muscles, so in this case it would be my extensor muscles on my forearm, they also relax. So what you end up with is this floppy, flabby muscle and it releases the pressure and pain, right? Pressure releases pain and tightness. Well, that's what's weird is because when you put pressure on a muscle knot, even though the pain will go away, not at first. Any of you who've ever had someone work out a muscle knot, it hurts the first time they touch it. You're like, oh, oh, yeah, that's the spot. That's the spot, right? And, they, and then you start going at it, right? That shouldn't be the case. If it was an energy crisis, at least, if it was an energy crisis, as soon as they put pressure, it should be like, ah, oh, and you would melt away. But we don't find that. In fact, when you put pressure on a muscle knot, on a trigger point at first, the pain increases as does the tightness, and you have to wait for it to release, which means that it's likely not an energy crisis. It's not a mini cramp. Nothing of that sort is going on, which only deepens the mystery of trigger points. Now, the two hypotheses that I've just discussed, right? The energy crisis as well as the hypersecretion of acetylcholine, those are only two of many different hypotheses surrounding the origin of trigger points, right? Some people out there believe it to be a metabolic issue in terms of like you have too much hyaluronic acid, for instance, that's accumulating. Some say that it's a fascial restriction. So the connective tissues above the muscle are actually the source of the problem because those are rich with nociceptors or pain receptors. But if you talk to an acupuncturist, they're going to tell you that it's an energetic accumulation that needs to be released with an acting needle, right? There, there's no shortage of hypotheses out there. And I'm not here to tell you which one's right or wrong. But if you were to ask me, right, we're just sitting down, hanging out, and you're like, Justin, what do you think causes trigger points? I'm going to give you a very non-sexy answer. And that is, I think it's actually going to be multiple things all kind of working together to create this nagging issue. Right? You're going to have probably a metabolic issue. And that metabolic issue probably does irritate nociceptors inside of the fascia. But if you were to say, well, what's the root cause? I think, then again, I think 
that it's actually originating in the central nervous system, in the brain and the spinal cord, possibly just one and not both. Right? Maybe there's some kind of signaling issue that's creating the hypersecretion of acetylcholine. And the fact that you inject Botox, and the reason why the pain doesn't go away is because pain is perceived inside of the brain, and the whole signaling mechanism is inside the central nervous system. But I, I, don't, I really don't know, and I'm not doing the research myself. This is just something that I like to think about. And the, and the truth is, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter from a practical standpoint, because what we do know is that if you poke it, they tend to go away. Even if that is really just a temporary fix, you still are going to experience relief. So I don't even know that most people care outside of me and other nerds who are the ones who are like, I got to find an answer. Because from a practical standpoint, it really doesn't matter all that much. But if I've done my job today, hopefully you are at least a little more on my side. And you're probably like, we got to figure this out. Gather your pitchforks and let's go conduct some awesome rageful science and figure out what on earth is going on with trigger points. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully my voice isn't as bad as I think it is, but I'll see when I put all the footage together. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I will see you in the next video.